What makes the guitar playing in the Stone Roses so interesting? John Squire is an excellent guitar player, definitely one of the best in the British indie rock scene, and there's many intricacies to his playing, but one I want to explore is how he structures what he's playing into these interesting, flowing, melodic rhythm guitar parts. So let's get cracking. When you play in a band with at least one other guitar player or a keys player, you can find your role within the music simply by playing the opposite of what else is being played. So if you have someone that's playing the chords, you might choose to play a melody line. If you have someone playing a melody line, you might choose to play the chords. As the only guitar player in the band, John Squire has managed to perfect the balance of blending chords and melody at the same time, and his approach to playing guitar is one of the key aspects that gives the Stone Roses their legendary sound. In the first Stone Roses album, the songs generally have quite straightforward chord progressions, and if these songs were played with just an acoustic guitar just strumming the chords of the songs, they'd still sound good, and this is because the songs themselves are good songs. But the Stone Roses wouldn't sound like the Stone Roses if John Squire just strummed these basic chord progressions. I'm going to use the song She Bangs the Drums as my example throughout this video. Now this song just goes from an E major chord to a D major chord throughout each of the verses. I want to keep things really simple for my chord progression, so I've decided to just use two chords. So I'm going to use a D major chord, go into a G major chord. And I have noticed that John Squire will often use sus chords in his chord progressions as well. So I might try changing the D to a D sus 2 at some point and the G to a G sus 2 as well. It helps if you know the chords that you're going to be playing in a few different positions. So I'm going to be using the D major chord here and I'm going to be using the D major chord here as well, which is just taking a part of the big six string root D major chord, just using the bottom three notes of it. And I'm going to use a G major chord here and here. He uses a variety of different techniques when he's playing, but there are a few that I want to talk about. Instead of playing all of the notes of the chord at once, like we do when we just strum a chord, we can pick out the notes of a chord individually, and this is called an arpeggio. Picking the notes of a chord like this gives us the tonality of the chord, but because we can play around with the order that we pick the notes in, we can make the chords sound more melodic. During the verses of She Bangs the Drums, the first thing he does is combine strumming with arpeggio picking. So he's got the E major chord as a bar chord and he strums the chord and then he picks out some of the notes of the chord. Now I do think it's a little bit random which notes he picks out, but they tend to be something like this. And he does the same idea when he goes to a D major chord, so he strums the chord and then picks some notes of the chord out. He will combine these strummed chords and the arpeggiated chords with short and simple melodies. It will help to know your scale patterns, but if you don't know the scale patterns, then you can try just humming some short, simple melodies over the chord progression that you're going to be playing with. And then see if you can find something that you like. And then all you need to do is to try and figure out the notes of the melody that you hummed on the guitar. As we're going to be combining these melodies with the chords, it does also help to find the melody's notes in similar positions to where you are playing the chords. In She Bangs the Drums, he uses a few different melodies, but these melodies repeat within the tune, but they're also in similar positions to the chords. So rather than him playing like a new major chord there and then going all the way down here to play a melody, he tends to keep the melodies really close by. He has three different melodies that he uses throughout the verse progression, and these fit really well with the chords. So he has this first melody which fits really well with the E major chord. So he does the E major chord and does the picking pattern. Then he goes to this melody. Now this melody works really well with this E major chord because this first note of the melody is part of the, the, um, the E major chord, which means that when you're doing arpeggio picking, you can really combine the pick part into the melody line. Something like that. So the first melody of the D major chord is this one. And that fits really well with the D major chord because it's in a very similar place and you can really connect those two, those two things together. 
yeah. something like that. Then the third melody has a melody he has also fits with a D major chord, and it starts very similar to that one. And it goes to there, and that leads you really well back to this E major chord. I've got two melodies that I want to use with my chord progression, but I might adapt these when I start putting the full thing together. And then I've got one going from the G chord to the D chord, which was... Da, 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 da. A technique that John Squire also likes to use is double stops. Double stops are when you play two notes at once and you play a lick or a melody that's harmonised. So there is a fourth melody that he uses in the verse section and this is to bring you out of the verse and into the chorus section. Now this is a really cool idea that you can experiment with as well. So instead of having one part just going straight into another part, have something different that links the parts together. Almost like how a drummer will add a drum fill to lead into a new section. And this melody is a double stop melody. So the first part is just playing the seventh fret on the G and B strings together. Then he plays the same two strings, G and B strings, but the uh, G string is at the sixth fret and the B string is at the fifth fret. And he goes back to those two at the seventh fret. So we've got Kind of like that. Then he goes to the fifth fret on the B and E strings. So those are all double stops. Then he does this little um, little melody line where he goes seven, six, four, back to six. And that leads you perfectly into the chorus section. I want to use a double stop idea in my example as well. So I've decided I'm gonna use the second melody I came up with and turn it into a double stop idea. So the melody was, so all I need to do is to try and find some notes that will work alongside each of those melody notes. So the first melody note is this one, and I'm going to use this note underneath it. So Then I've decided I'm going to keep this note down and just change to this one. So I've got the same note underneath both of these first two notes of my melody. Now this note I'm holding down underneath those two melody notes is actually the next note in my melody. So I'm going to add this note underneath this one. So we've got... I think that sounds quite nice. Now, when I go up to this note in my melody, I'm going to add this note underneath it. I think it sounds pretty good. So I've got... And I think that sounds pretty cool. Combining techniques is the fun part of John Squire's playing. The thing to pay attention to is how to combine the different techniques so that they blend seamlessly. See, we're aiming to have parts join together with no gaps between them at all. So instead of being techniques played one after another, if we combine them, these separate techniques will become one whole thing that ends up being greater than the sum of its parts. To do this, we can start by using common tones between the techniques to blend them together. So when you're playing arpeggiated chords, because we're picking the notes individually, we can use notes from the chords as either starting points or link up points to start the melodic lines. My melody starts with sliding into this note. Now we start the slide from this note, which is actually a part of the D sus2 chord shape that I'm coming from. So I'm gonna use this shared note from my arpeggiated chord and melody as like a segue to link the two parts together. This is something that I've practiced a lot and I've found that the best way that I can get them to smoothly transition is to hold down the chord as long as I possibly can, even whilst I'm picking the first note that I'm going to be sliding um, into the melody. So the longer that I can keep this chord ringing for, the smoother this change is going to be. Now it might not seem like much, but to me there's a clear difference from playing something like this. to this. They just seem to blend a bit better together in my opinion. Keeping notes sustained whilst making changes is the reason that changing between open chords sounds very smooth as you can have open strings ringing through the chord changes, making them sound more connected to each other. So if there are any notes that you can keep playing throughout these changes in techniques, this will blend your transitions and make them sound smoother and more connected. For my example guitar part that I'm making, I'm going to try and use this concept as much as I can, as I think this is the key to connecting the parts seamlessly. From the melody I just played, I can keep these two notes held down 
and ringing out, which will help the connection into this G major chord because these two notes are a part of the G major chord. So that should connect this gap quite well and make the transition from the melody into this next chord quite smooth as well. I've used this when I'm playing the G chord in this position here. I can keep this chord held down, but just moving this finger down means I can start playing the double stop idea that comes next. When I've played the double stops, I can leave this last shape of the double stops held down, add this finger, which is the start of the D major chord, and then I can remove this last finger of the double stop when I need to pick that part of the D chord. And this should connect the double stops to this D major chord. This was really tricky to do at first, and it may seem like a lot to think about, but this is what makes all of these transitions work. It's these little differences that are easily overlooked, but they're the things that really do make a difference. Here's what I've been coming up with. When you listen to John Squire's parts and think about how they are structured, you realise how beautifully they are put together. See, it's very tempting to just come up with something and then just repeat the exact same thing over and over again in a loop. But this isn't what he does. This is why I think his parts sound so intricate, because he will adapt them and he will structure them so they fit perfectly with the song. If we look at the song She Bangs the Drums, when Ian Brown sings the lines, the future's mine, we're all out of time. John Squire cuts the melody lines from his guitar part and just lets the chord ring out, which I think really highlights these lyrics. These ideas are simple on their own, but to me, it's all about listening to what you're contributing to the song and knowing when to play more and when to play less. This approach says to me that you can combine different ideas, but it's how you connect the ideas that makes things interesting. If you figure out how to connect things, as I said before, you can make something that is greater than the sum of its parts and something that is unique to you as a musician. John Squire likes to use techniques that he likes to play, but you don't have to use the same techniques that he uses. The goal is not to become a clone of John Squire. I don't think my part that I've come up with sounds necessarily like John Squire. The goal is to see what we can learn and then apply it to what we do. So try combining two different techniques that you like to use already, maybe riffs and chords. Finger style and strumming. Melodies with chords. Just have fun and see what you can blend together. What makes John Squire's guitar playing so interesting? It isn't just the techniques he uses or how technically advanced he is as a player, it's how he's taken the skills that he has and used his creativity to develop his own style that is uniquely his own. Thanks for watching this video. If you do like this video, then I think you'll really enjoy this video as well. Please check out my Patreon page where you can get involved with the videos I make. It's your support that makes it possible to keep making these videos. So please feel free to check out my Patreon page and I will see you in this next video.